So, um, we add actually okay. mm -hmm. key things that uh, we said that we're going to look at this time. Um, have you had a look at it? Uh, I, I think we were supposed to do cost planning, pricing strategies, and decision. Yes, yeah, cost planning, pricing strategies, and decision making responsibility centers, right? Yes, yes. You look, we said let's look at ABC costing. So, because I did explain to you what activity based costing is. Mm -hmm. uh, have you got ABC costing and again relating to cost planning, pricing strategies, decision making? I've been, yeah. Yes, go ahead. Uh, cost planning and pricing strategies, I, I had no time on looking at the last chapter. Right. The last one on the so you said costing, cost planning. Yes, and pricing strategies as well. Okay, so let's see what you come up with cost planning. Okay. Yeah, I've seen they talk about the learning curve theory. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when I looked at, I looked at it, this is company. Now, first thing I was wondering, primarily they talk about the uh, uh, primary main to labor costs and all that. But I was looking okay. at it from a British industry. They have a chance to, to, to improve and say, because they are uh, lost here. Yes. We are going to open many stores. If we can improve processors, I, I, this is my thought. I, I, I might be going wrong, but this, by using the processors, you can uh, saving on wastage also on items. Mm -hmm. But these mm -hmm. are, you know, maybe major, major cost savings should come through your. So maybe mm -hmm. you can use same labor to open more stores. This is where I looked at it from. What you're saying is from Gav what you're saying, Gavin, is let's open uh, stores using uh, a team that's already quite um, well seasoned. Exactly, because uh, this is a long-serving company, but you need to know other factors also. This is just at, at, at the high level. You need to know uh, how uh, people, you know, if they're the most experienced people, you can use them. Now going to, going into this, your study before this when you're doing this learning curve theory or you're trying to apply this in an organization. Yes. Say so, for so example, what you what generally happens is um when you now the current current let's let's take an example of a uh of a store that's already operational, right? Mm -hmm. So this this team is working really well. well. Uh, because standardized processes, right? This is a cart menu kind of thing, yeah. right? So the, you need to look at it in a very, it is a reduction process, yeah. right? Can we improve? So uh, we will look at, at like Sigma as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we try to, and zero defects, right? Mm -hmm. this, this is we're trying to do zero defect, six things that we can uh, scientifically to improve. So look, look at the current uh, store, right? Once you look at the current store and get to an idea, right? This is this is the way that I can improve. Pros now can be standardized. Yeah. Where it is applied in a store in a store in country X, Y, or Z, right? This is can be standardized, and therefore uh, you achieve that learning. The the learning curve, your curve is pretty um, you know, fast in this case, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You take so in, it's not like you're going and opening a store. Right, and get them kind of go from scratch, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. An activity. Yes. So yes. what you mentioned before, I like that concept of where you a set of people, right? A team of people who go in 
to the new store and train them on the new on these processes right in that way they learn very quickly they don't by having the experienced people training the new people right it's the curve is pretty fast a quick quick turn yeah yeah so in that way so experience new new store team group anything yes. from you I'm looking into the slide of the learning curve. Yes. And I'm going to the example. I just, yeah, something I don't uh, you know, understand uh, uh, you know, completely, which is they divide. Um, it's a time required, total time required, you know, in hours. Mm -hmm. And they divide it by the previous, let's say, previous uh, cumulative. Output units. If you do, you look in the same slide. Yeah, let me look at it. Okay, slide number thirty-seven, I believe. Right, you're looking into P two, correct? P two. I mean, the the last step, which is dividing four. Uh, Uh, divide 40 gave him the by, by one. one. What, what's yes, the uh, uh, I think, uh, I think uh, Yeah. 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 The first, uh, slide seven. Yeah, I'm trying to. This. Yeah. Yeah. In, in additional hours, you can. Total hours, it's, you know, 90, which is total hours divided by the output two. Okay, the average it takes to produce a output at this level but they divide 40 by one which is the previous cumulative output units and I don't know what's the direct relationship or what's it trying to make here so what it's uh, what's happening is you see now we're saying a additional one unit output each yeah. additional output incremental output mm -hmm. So each addition now in this case it is additional output you're wearing right in the next one it's four before if you look at the last one which is the cumulative output unit eight it will be eight. okay well, I did. Eight, one, eight minus four If you look at it, if you, if you try to make the first time you're going to make this, this um, it, you will take 50 hours. <coughs> That's logic. Yeah. Because you are now, you try to make the second one, one yeah. right? It will. What is Correct. Yeah. Incremental total hours, incremental hours, 40. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay? Okay. And similarly, the more you make, you're a big spurt. You're in different ways. And you, you are reducing the number of hours taken. That's, mm -hmm. that's how it's going from 40 to 32. Calculation is, you know, you you're going to be dividing it by the number of of out human output. Okay. Okay. Let me. Yeah. All right. Then. 
to help the costling. Yeah, uh, what they say is uh, on the middle side also. Yeah. So this is primarily labor oriented. On the middle also due to wastage. Uh, that, be, that could be, because I think if you look at this uh, cost, uh, um, so there is a high proportion of cost going to be serious. Yeah. And down the north. So maybe there is a possibility to explore. Correct. If, so this is where, is. yeah, this is where, Gavin, we go into zero waste yeah. effects. Yeah. So it, it, yeah. that's, that's the concept, you know. You, you are looking into your inventory in real life. Uh, what, we, what you would be looking into is actually what is the inventory you consumed, right? In this case, how much, how much you purchase material. Right? How much did you throw away? How much? What was your cost of goods sold? Right? What the accountant will be looking at that to identify, right? Uh, in wastage. Right? Or with the things of more people. Yes. Re remember, if you've seen. Um, God Ramsey's, um, God Ramsey, he goes into kitchens, right? Yes. So he goes in, when he tries to turn around a, a restaurant, right? One of the first things he goes and he looks into, if you remember, the, the different the menu. Okay. If you look in, he immediately looks into the menu and he says, you know, any menu. Got so many things. I can, yeah. Yeah. That means, I mean, there's no way you can make a profit, right? Okay. Yeah. I think that may mistake people do have. Either, either, either it's the marketing gimmick that they have, they yeah. the items in the menu, and if you want, yes, we have. Yeah. 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 Kind of. Yeah. When we go in the next one, product life cycle, is, I think this menu will come up. The problem that you have. Correct. Right. What we can do is that one in the menu. menu. Okay. And another one he talks about is he looks at the type of, um, he looks at uh, the stage. He goes right into the in the kitchen and he opens the fridge and he looks at what in the fridge right in the store and he said no are you crazy you know there's so much food here why you keep on buying what thing see he looks at the menu right feed the variety see? so what we're trying to do in the menu is limit the variety Right. Then he looks in the storage, right, and to find out how much stuff is there in the storage. Yeah. And what about um, what can you come up with cost planning? Let the next one. Red. Yeah. Anything you have, Jacob? We start with you. Well, the first thing uh, at what uh, stage of the farm is. Yeah. Is it is it in growth? Is it in maturity? Clear. Yeah. I'm talking about at what stage. Yes. Uh, can classify. It's a time. Okay. Growth or is it a maturity? Okay. I, I, by looking into the data, uh, would we say it's a maturity? Is it right, uh, uh, Andrew? Looking at the data, we're saying the pizza time is in the maturity stage 
from a product perspective? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have been in, in the market since. Uh, um, I'm not sure which year, but they uh, known in the area. So I, I think we it's between growth and maturity because they are going to new markets as well, right? Yes. Now you look at Coke, right? Coke. Yeah. They're in the market for a long time. Okay. But um, which in? So that's a question mark because you're right. Um, in certain markets, you are um, in the mid stage, but in certain markets, you're growing. Okay. Okay. Right? You do not, we do not look into it as a whole, you know. We have to dissect it. Because, yeah, because you see, in, a, in, in their current market, their homeland, they have been there for a long, long time. Yes. There's competition there. So they fight for their fight for their patch, right? They have to fight, really fight for it. So they're in kind of a mature stage there, right? Uh, and basically gaining market share, right? And they don't want to lose the market share because the people that are going is over there competing with them, correct? Now, now they want to go into another market, right? market. There are two other new markets, actually, right? So in that case, uh, because of the of geographic spread, right, they're able to um, extend their product, right? right? That is in relation to the marketing aspect. But if you're looking at the, the life cycle, life cycle costing, what do you think? So let's let's dissect dissect um the 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 whole process right the kind of the supply chain and and the product itself. So if if you if you look at it, um, this will be getting the flour. So from the wholesaler, you're going to get the flour right to make the factor one one aspect right so they be, let's only look at one geographic market one geography and let's say they are going to get from you know it's a it's a massive they've got a huge amount of stores so they will be getting a lot of flour on a regular basis right now the thing is they to look at the costing of that as well and look at um now we bring in the sustainability and that trade Okay, because the flour can come from, am I, I mean, from where is it coming, right? So, is it sourced ethically? Right? So, in your life cycle costing, right, one thing that needs to be, uh, um, need to make a, a kind of an impression here is that I'm bringing here again CR as well as sustainability. The 
because this is related to farming right and food okay. um, so bringing these aspects into my life cycle costing itself you know that uh, when you when you insist on certain criteria your costing is going to go up okay. is in certain cases let's say uh, if if guys are only focusing on a product with low cost right different type of a product that you're going to give you can source uh, the raw material the cheap best possible place but it's not to say it's going to be of good quality right um, me this will be uh, an area of um, kind of interesting area to see how are we going to do the uh, costing right the, co the whole life cycle of it right then to the to the mix of that you need to think of the logistics logistics come to play as well how can we uh, minimize the carbon footprint okay any views on these please this uh, uh, this part is cost related to marketing as well because when i do this it says uh we try to keep the product the product as long as break even time maximizing maximizing the length of the life span yes my product uh can you so again again say again yeah maximize break even maximize the length of the life span it's also maximize return over the product life but they talk Sorry. about the new max cost yeah right yeah. Yeah. so we are talking about this exit this one yes yeah. yeah now we're looking at the pre production cost we read that that production cost we're looking at the marketing service so that i be brought in the logistics and stuff yeah. like that yeah okay So based on what is what is the whole crux of this? The cost over products, including production stage. So our products last is how long? Actually, to the consumer, that product. Sorry, the life. I'm getting it's just no, it's in the market for a while. and they yeah and i i need to eat i don't think now be uh, uh, so i think this is the at the maturity stage or you know is that that so next stage is is a decline stage what is that you look at which i put into the market as a different life cycle yes no mm -hmm. i think you got uh product life cycle and life cycle costing mixed up okay okay okay, okay. In this case what they are looking at is a product right let an item okay. not an item yeah. okay. Okay. food item okay let right our cost our out of products right so you think of design cost so are in the time to market Okay. If you take a long time to market it, right, yeah. your cost, you're not turning it faster, correct? Yeah. Okay. Fill, okay. fill in inventory. Okay. okay. Minimize okay. break-even time. Okay. Right. Span. Maximize the length of the lifespan of that particular product. In a food item, that is idea, right? It it needs to move very fast. You are not talking about what the life span. Yeah, yeah, Jakub. 
Yes, I do, uh, Andrew. Mm-hmm. Um, so, okay, so, yeah, what's also a little caution that, uh, I mean, uh, okay. in this, yes. So, maybe a, a good question for you would be that, um, you know, how would you? Um, is on how to uh, come up with life cycle costing, right? Uh, and life si- how can life cycle costing take into uh, um, the financial stability? Okay. Right. If that okay. question is put forward, how can life cycle costing improve the profitability of pizza pizza time. What we'll say, you need to describe a bit about life cycle cost. Exactly. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. You see, it's production cost, production cost, market services and support cost. Right? That's the cost yeah. components that come in, that is pre-production and entering and the logistics. In this, right? So, three, we'll, we'll talk about it. And so, you know, this is these are the cost components that come to play. But we'll also talk about make it to make real. Now we talk about we bring we need to talk about CSR, we need to talk about the, because it's a food item, it's a perishable food item, and you need to talk about the quality of the food, right? Especially day and age when people are quite concerned about, you know, obesity type diabetes. Right, and where you are positioning your product not as a fast food, actually, it's a good quality product. Right, I mean, today you get a big, good go burgers, right? Go pizza, it's a fast food product. Right? People like companies like McDonald's, they're, they're forced to introduce, and that is consumers, uh, you know, because of the society. The creamers are also pressurizing people like McDonald's to bring in stuff like fresh juice, salad, right? Yes. So this is never there before. Okay. They're checking into you know, what goes into the burger as well. You know, they say it's real, real meat. The thing is, now we are very concerned. We, we can't be a, a cost leader, you know. But we can cost leader, we can follow that strategy, but we need to have very good product because we always say in, in the scenario, it's quite clearly stated, our reputation matters a lot. Yeah, very concerned about our reputation. Right? We want to give a but the advantage because we started 40 years ago. Right? We have the market coverage, we have the, we have the good positions and things like that. So we're in a good Good, good situation. However, when we how we need to look at, right? Maybe so. For example, we we would have been doing uh, products, which is food. Right? Now maybe with a different lens, we need to look at it and say, right now I'm going to bring in different types of raw material into it. Okay, how it impact because the life, the certain, I can't, products, I can't keep it long. My life is very short, mm-hmm. right? So to compensate for that, you need, my, my logistics is going to increase. How will you manage this? Mm-hmm. I think we spoke about, you guys brought the thing where, let's, let's use local farmers. Don't we use produce from the local farmers? So two things happening. You you with the CSR, you're ticking the box with sustainability. You're ticking the box with very good material. Okay, happening. Uh, and you can only do it by kind of focusing right on this local cost. Looking at what really goes into this product. 
through life cycle not just one time okay i'm not just looking at well let's look at the direct cost that come in which is the dough the toppings but throughout like the beginning from the flour to the point where it's given to the consumer and the next slide is dough and comparing the life cycle costing with the traditional management accounting system yes which is like you know yes it summarizes in this one now you could see it so it's not going in first we in this particular slide we talk about the product costing yeah then we are going into management of customers as well okay slow going into the product to customer if you see mm. okay again uh, which was not really run in the traditional sense right so this is from product as the costing yeah this is a very good word that you can use in your case right the life cycle costing is a word that you can use because again you are picking the picking the product with the net aspects because it should be technically savvy in this case right is that you you are um you are in your technical skills to show well life i know about life cycle costing this is it does it not only looks at we can use it in in the form of a product but also we are can, we can use it in in a management of customers right in this yeah. cost yes sir sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so the, this life cycle of costing so what does it uh, what what is trying to tell us is that we should you know your costing should be for life of the product or what it's trying to tell is a you have to look from a let's say look at a product itself the product you it's whole life cycle okay not only um at point in time oh, look at okay. like right rather this at the production Okay. you have have to then because if you remember we also spoke about value chain and will also have an impact on your life cycle costing yeah to chain uh, by looking at you know how these areas will add value then the cost you need to have these things coming together now you to do life cycle costing of the product again to have very good systems okay it's good to talk about life cycle costing in theory but it is a ball game when you have to do it yeah. i do think and we were to I mean, do with some of it in the case i mean will the costing like this to costing using this concept um, or are we going to talk about it and just generally it? they don't they don't give a calculation per se right calculation they okay. you to interpret okay i think because we uh, have they are talking about this type of costing mhm and but they are using lot of data it data yes, yes. you so this, again again we very nicely we can bring in the concept of what you need to do for like this this to be available right so i is critical critical to add data yes sir right data.
because in the the components that go in imagine the touch points right oh yeah oh, so, oh yeah. how can you just like that do it with a excel sheet oh my god yeah, yeah it's not possible <laughs> so when you bring these things in you need to touch on another aspect which is okay you have it systems it's imperative right if it's not you have to just forget it other time yeah. right you can you can you know there might be there might be a scenario like this now you ask me for a question an example they might say okay the um, uh, finance uh, finance director will say you know i've just heard, i've gone to a conference i've heard about this life cycle cost thing uh, can you please explain to me what this is and how we can benefit by using it yeah okay this is a typical question that you can get okay and she will it will be says stated well i have to brief the md on this on this conference so can you please send me in the next 20 minutes or next 40 minutes that's the time for the answer mm. so then we briefly talk about this is the entire cycle costing this is how you can utilize these are the, you know you can apply to uh, pizza time and then of course you will touch base on things like you know the importance of it yes like make a really uh, good answer because examiner knows you're not just where it things can go wrong i will show you where it can go wrong is there you talk only about life cycle costing okay if you only about life cycle costing you beautifully put this graph somehow right put all the details what is a life cycle costing right and get 100% for technical and zero for everything else oh. okay. because you have to a you have not applied to your to your scenario b you have not brought in the other aspects business skills into it but you need to talk about okay now this is life cycle cost and apply these are the pre requisite pre requisites for life cycle costing as well yeah okay so inshallah in our mock exam on july <laughs> <laughs> if 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 the talk if they talk about life cycle costing this is kind of a typical question they give right okay. they will know the marketing as well yes yes because it's a life cycle you will be left you know but you charge in the cost of staff of course that life cycle to maximize because we talk about uh, loyalty cards and all that correct as as yes. now that is we talk on the customer life cycle right when you bring in the customer into the account how do you make him or her come to your store every time how do you make him or her order your products every time yeah. over burgers yeah. over some food product yeah we have discount cards like you know, we have a sort of like elevation burger and they give us like you know a small card uh, every time you buy from them they punch it and when you complete seven punches you will get a free burger which is small one it's yeah. a good one it's a good one yeah. we're going there you know yes yeah then and they do this for coffee coffee things um it is very very good so you can also come up with some innovative things like for example you know for kids you can have some game thing in right include game that the kids start playing the game and if you win certain things you can get a burger or you know you know a pizza you know certain things and in the game itself you can include okay you buy one pizza you can enter into this other game other area you know you can incorporate gaming in to your food because that is sector of the market they have the way they have never done this thing huh? i've never seen i'm just this is my imagination so um, 
something you can think about as how because you you've got a young audience right you got you got a set of customers who are young. then you have to make sure you have good product yeah right it's not it's not junk food you cannot go to the category of junk food that's what to avoid Uh, we talk about the customer life cycle anything okay we also spoke about pricing strategies right? that's one of the other areas yeah. i think here that you come up with yeah, strategy yeah. pricing strategy mhm go ahead no you do okay uh, what well, well you know i um, you know following the traditional approach Uh, and is we can with the control with the with the variable costs mhm i have to me a new there's a new name here on this slide which is i think which is the you know variable cost plus markup yeah okay talking, talking about uh another mhm I can talk to my PDF file. Did it care? Okay, that's simple thing. Uh, costing uh, plus full cost to plus pricing. Mm-hmm. And then uh, when they full cost, it will include all his cost as well, right? So, but let's talk about price elasticity of mine. Yeah. Is this product in elastic or elastic? Okay. Yes. So if the price is up, you know, it is sensitive to the price. It is, yes. Any condition. Yeah? yeah, yeah. So one of the things that you need the characteristics of this product it it is it is thick. Right? It's sensitive. Okay. Okay. And then that is the first thing that we no okay and the next one uh, product life cycle sorry product life cycle the one organization good than another it is influenced by three principal factors so this our product life cycle quality and market right these things also play a part in our pricing that is saying in short because you way if i certain pizzas are expensive than pizza hut but why do people went buy it people still patronize it because the quality right so the simple thing thing yes mm-hmm. certain things that will influence the price well okay but we in a, in an area where we are so kind of the market correct yeah. we, we are not now what are market what is a market characteristic highly competitive yeah. no, I mean, and what are consumers uh, customers These guys are these guys are um, we, we, it is not selective it's not high end it's in a niche market it's not like you know where you sell ferrari or rice right. okay now if even for example rolls royce even though they have a demand 
for let's say 100 cars for a for a month they will not produce 100 cars they will produce they will produce 60 why do you think that the price up yes yes uh, to keep the price up and to have that um, have scarcity in the market right get it remember there was um some time ago when poor Cayenne came in right? poor Cayenne. the price second hand portion was more expensive than brand new <laughs> this was many years ago the reason was there was such a big um Demand big line of people waiting to get the Porsche can right and people who go first in position to sell it at a higher price because people are willing to buy it right? because they get it oh. right so yes. you create a demand a scarcity right so a high end product like choice they don't, they don't want to fulfill the demand they will reduce they will not sell not make I mean, our product, of course, is not like that. Mm -hmm. It's a product odd. So you can see the the customers are different. Product characteristics are different. Right? Our market is highly competitive. Right? Uh, um, there, we have many, right? We mm -hmm. have a large customer base. Right, um, um, as conscious as well, right, as conscious, yeah. okay. So, in mind, you can't go for a full cost strategy mm -hmm. because this is basically the, uh, the customer will say, Okay, you know, I don't care about your full cost strategy because. You need to give me one the market. The market price is this. Exactly, exactly. So, this case when you will do the whole cost, okay? No, into a target, target price is already a target is there. There's a feeling, yes. There's price. Yes. We have to achieve that. Yes. So, when we cannot exceed. Correct. Right. It is on our part to reduce our cost to increase margins. Okay. We have to strive. Yes. And remember, it's not just other pizza things. Pizza competed, right? We are competing with other food types as well. Okay. So let's say when these guys started 40 years ago, maybe there was no pizza in that country. However, there would be something else, right? Say, for example, I'm starting here a pizza thing. It's a cost of then I have to compete with the shawarmas, right? Yeah. See, how much shawarma? So my shawarma is let's say six grams, and my pizza is like a huge difference. You should, I can't. Add to other factors, I need to take into consideration as well. You know, exactly. other food items that will compensate, that will that will compete with this. Uh -huh. We need. To do. Yes. Simple coffee. And uh, if you take coffee and juice right. and a soft drink, right? And juice is more expensive than soft drink. Right? Of juice is more expensive, but there is value in it. And there's value in it, right? It's good, it's fresh, right? So they pay 
thread. And you know, now coin a fresh juice, if it goes hand in hand and it's the same price. Right? What should it price? So similarly, when you go into pizza, you need to look at what are the other products that they're selling in the market. Right? Competitors. Anything else? Hmm? Which one? Demand curve. Demand curve. These two slides. Yes. Demand curve. Uh, I'm trying to get it. I, I just take the computation. Yes. I understand what they're trying to get, get at. It. Okay. Uh, which, mm. which, uh, which is at zero, what would be the price? Yes. But I, try, I, I just couldn't understand what, uh, if you look at this uh, first example. Yes. Uh, So that, right, look at this one, this example on my screen where it's saying you, you get a maximum demand for a company stock, 7,000, right? Demand will reduce by 150 for every dollar increase in selling price. Exactly. So the sensitivity they're calculating, exactly. sensitivity. Right. Well, as elasticity and your right. Correct. Yes. So it's a four thousand say now they use this for the profit maximizing annual sales. Is this what yes. you mean by break even sales? Or is it no, no. No, that is break even is it will cover your cost. Cost. No. Right. Yeah. This profit maximizing annual sales. Profit okay. will maximize at this sale level. Level at 4,000 units. And it's particularly selling price. Yeah, he, he, he says, it's all, you know, every $1 increase, your volume will go down by, by one. Correct. What if you may allow me, Andrew? Yes. To, just to my knowledge on this. Again, here, uh, it's what is, uh, what is, how is you the your product to a change in, in price. So if you increase your shawarma by to more one real or one dirham to the demand, you know, will people buy it the same in the same quantities or will you know buy less? So if the product is elastic, mm. because when, once you increase the price, people will act negative to that. Mm. You know, but some some products are inelastic. Like uh, I think uh, for the diabetic patients, they not whatever is the price. You know, they have to buy yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if it is by even five six dirhams, the, the demand will still stay the same. Yeah. That's why you know uh, that's a good example, and that's why things like you know if it's okay. yeah, you have to pay. And um, and telecommunication, right? In certain countries, when it comes to insurance as well, the government will come in and they will set the prices, mm. right? They will allow you to increase even fuel, right? The government comes in to set set the ceiling and set up to only up to this much you can increase, right? But they are protecting and uh, the private electric, uh, the uh, power company. If if just give them the authority, they can maximize profitability. They could put up to whatever price, right? So we will buy it. We will yeah. yeah. it. Okay. When the government intervenes, there is nothing that they could do. So this government will control, and you know, because that is a that is an item where there is, uh, you know, price elastic. So to briefly touch on that in the this discussion. It depends, right? It depends on the question asked. 
Okay. It's a pricing question. You can talk about certain certain things. Okay. What about these these ones? These graphs. Marginal cost equals marginal revenue. That is the point. Your profits are maximized. Okay. 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 About the MC equals MR where where it's maximized. Just have a brief look at what marginal cost and marginal revenue is. Yeah, okay. Because again, um, look at at what price uh, you, you the best. What is the what is the quantity at which and the price at which you can sell products? Mm -hmm. okay. Profit minimizing selling price and the output level. That's what they're trying to calculate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you might have to just brush your knowledge on that. Yeah, as well. yeah, sure, sure. Okay. So, uh, full cost pricing, I don't think it's applicable here because, exactly. you know, it, it doesn't any sense in this case. Right? Why is that, Andrew? Because no one's going to buy. Pricing is, I am asking of inefficiency to you. So then, no one buy it because already in the market, for example, I can buy a pizza for twenty twenty dollars. Let's say, right? And then your cost, you're saying, okay, I'm gonna cost it, and your cost comes up to hundred. If you ask the CEO, the CFO, somebody, yes. Yeah. I think uh, a different explanation is like if you are doing uh, brand like, yeah. or a product. First, like you were talking about the can. Yes. No yes. person who wants to buy a can might look at the books like Dorag or, or whatever. They might think. But if you really on the brand, you will pay, I think you will pay out of the market. Uh, maybe you will be strategy, cost plus. Actually, they will go, uh, yeah, I mean, cost. Plus they will charge but, yeah, a huge amount. Because, yeah, but this is the brand. branding. Correct. Brand exactly. So you right. can cheat the, you know. We will price, right? Yeah, because I think you, you uh, are the premium for the brand. Because I, uh, they want to only cap a niche market. Mm -hmm. not Because if you look at the strategy of these guys, the pizza time, what is their strategy to go and market to the masses? Okay. Their growth strategy is also expanding. The same product, they're expanding into the new market. Right? But if if you look at what is their... their Porter's, Porter has got three strategies. Cost leadership, um, difference, and focus. These guys are going into the cost leadership model where you are going to serve a big market, right? We serve a big market. Um, you know, you are looking at looking at getting economy scale, right? And you only way that you can gain profit is by through the scale and then increase margins. You're going to be quite low. So, I'm going to give you a cost based approach. If now, with all these common products in the market, and you know, yes. have, is this a, not a main concept? Or is this, see, if you're coming up with a, with a brand new product, a, a, a product which is something which is smart, then maybe use this approach. Mm -hmm. But if you're coming up, I think most of the products. No, it, it depends on what the type of the product okay. and your market, okay. right? So okay. these characteristics play a huge part okay. because okay. if I, as I said, I could I could sell 
a car which is mass market that could sell a car i only want 10 people to have the consumers are such that they you know my niche market is such they really don't want everyone else to have that car as well they mind paying a premium for few people to have it fine for this product or which type of product is very different characteristics going as market they they are price conscious also bear in mind they need to be good quality raw material because it's a food item so it is like you know boeing or airbus and you think they will use full constraint uh not really okay airbus are going yeah in you know, they will look at um, i would i wouldn't say they would i mean can't pass on um thing cost means you will you don't have much you can of you're not conscious of your costings right okay. just what the cost is you just passing it on yes. but don't be the case for most I see. Yeah, because the 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 customers will stop buying. They say, you know what? what? It, it is. I think it it's not worth for me. Exactly. Yeah, it's not just one time purchase. I need to repeat as well. So then I will stop buying because I can't. You know, it's not affordable. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. Go on. asking this question because i i was a strange question yesterday yes from the treatment you know that was a shocking question do you what was the question yeah do you include your overhead when you price your contract to the customer so i said i mean no include all the my my you know variable costs mm-hmm. i am margin even to cover you know part of my overhead and the more contracts i gain Mm-hmm. Then cover from my uh, fixed cost and overhead and create a profit at the end. Yeah. So, what what's the type of um, business you're in? Well, services, uh, facilities management, you know, services. Right. Intense, labor intensive, cleaning, you know, maintenance, yeah. uh, inspections, yeah. like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I have to load my full overhead on my in you know, my contracts I, i just add a margin margin or markup yes and you also can... need to be competitive isn't it exactly exactly because exactly. the other other the people are providing the same thing yeah 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 but who are because what again uh, uh, how do you manage your overhead cost So we have a cost. Well, the cost comes from basically the administration stuff. Administration so is very like small. Like myself. Yeah. So we have the minimum minimum administration staff as okay. much as possible. Yeah, because it will be the highest. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, one of, so one of the things that you will, uh, so that's, that's a good example where you, you can look at uh admin so you will always look at you know your cost base at right? what are the cost cost that you that you have in the company and then you look at you know what direct cost that you got with your labor right? and exactly. then you look at what cost that's supporting you right the mm-hmm. supporting cost could you you could administration finance uh, it right or correct mm-hmm. yes. so exactly. support cost and then you look at how to reduce my support cost exactly. okay i it's not a case of okay i support cost of 100000 i'm going to pass it on to my customers <laughs> yes okay. yeah. that that will not work because, uh, of course price sensitive again okay, uh, again you know the point and you raised earlier in the session of the second one 
where the admin admin cost of pizza time is high. Mm. Mm. It's high. I think, uh, yeah, we need yes. to touch on that in the, in the solution of the case. Yes. yes. And talk about that in, in the case of, you know, what are alternatives? Okay. We, how can we reduce it? Maybe from where you are doing to somewhere else. Right? So Maybe far, also. Yes. Right, because uh, rather than you focusing on IT finance, you know finance processing, you can be done anywhere. Right, so the people who would, the companies who specialize on this. Yeah, yeah. So you you do. Now I know there was a student of uh, this is quite interesting. There's a student of mine. She was uh, head of um, the whole department, a whole whole geographic area, right? Um, Middle East, Africa, and Asia. She was finance, and uh, they were a removing company. But the thing was, they were not only doing moving of people, right? They were actually providing a service to the corporate clients. What they were doing was they were paying utility bills, Right, then all the admin kind of costs, administrative activities for the customers. That's nice. So the customers, imagine if if I'm, let's say in your case, right? I'm giving business idea. I'll go on a They already have customers, right? Your cleaning service. So exactly this is what she was, what this, her company was doing. They were moving executives, senior executives. When they move from, let's say, Singapore to Dubai to then to London, they look after all their moving. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Right? So at the same time, what they say is, right, now anything related to your um, duty bill payments for these houses, everything like that, take care of it. Similarly, in your case, it's say, okay, if you have a client who's got five, six, seven, or ten sites, and you say, okay, you already know me, okay, I'm sending my product. I'm giving you an additional, additional valid service. Okay. You pay me for my cleaning services. Now, I'll, I'll manage all your payments for all these things. And do it. That's what they do. So yeah, for a margin, yes. Yes. Yeah, they keep a small margin. So then it's far better to give it to these people rather than manage that hassle. This works perfectly with multinational corporations, which we deal with some of them. Yes. You know, you know, um, the petition is very fierce here over the multinationals. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so you propose this? Yeah, well, yeah, we and they they came to us usually with such requests, you know, and yeah. we take them on board, you know. Yeah. Problem is, you know, the, the beauty of customers here. We, we are right to talk. Other uh, is. Yes. They don't even yeah, they use the facilities management and not source the facilities management in the first place. Yes. They do it. Yeah, because labor is very cheap. <laughs> because labor is cheap. Yes. The relations with the country does not protect the poor labor you know, and they yes. lack their yeah. living conditions, mm-hmm. housing mm-hmm. conditions. The rules are there maybe, yeah, but yes. The infant is weak. Correct. And they are suffering from. Yeah. Yeah. So, in back to our one, um, our full cost certainly will not be there. Then we talk about marginal cost plus pricing. That is a pricing. Mm -hmm. That is the sale price means marginal cost of production. Margin. Which is also uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. 
okay trying in in a limiting the situation suppose a business is working at full capacity and is restricted by storage of resources from expanding output further by what target profit it would like to earn in establish a mark up per unit of limiting factor so that means your your capacity is full no you're in such a position you say right because my capacity is full, i will mount up at this price because i know i sell in the market right i expand in this situation we don't we have very few competitors innovation we have a lot of competitors competitors who make pizza as well as other food products mm-hmm. that's what we have to think about it's not only making pizza Right. Questions. No. Right. So we might self-explanatory. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 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 About this decision-making and responsibility centers. I didn't go into details, Anju. To be honest, I just maybe flipped some pages on this one. Right. This is mostly theoretical, um, uh, it's, a, it's concept, you know. And How do you use this concept in pizza? Okay. Other one. No, listen, okay. Okay. Let's see, I'm just going to support the account. Okay. 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 This is the first one. one that right. making in responsibility centers if i take that topic i think we can really um use it well okay i tell you why can us explore the why we can use it the uh, cost centers and profit centers now your profit centers are your uh, you know all cost centers your back office mm-hmm. profit your your So what I identify right? profit yeah. okay to be managed that that that's one hurdle yeah and then what we're also saying is compare the profit center right and store profitability analysis and otherwise okay so i'm just saying profit analysis the way i'm doing this is then i'm saying um in a decentralized um structure isn't it exactly right I'm questioning the structure and mm-hmm. also asking um um what is each one how is it adding value exactly. right so let's go back to it back to my decision making in case right the cost cost profit and investment centers we have we look at performance reports we look at that right mm-hmm. now why are we doing this whole thing is to kind of analyze our whole operation this is where we are analyzing your operation and looking at it and saying well the structure itself is it structured right this is there are two common ways of structuring an organization functional and divisionally right division structures can lead to decentralization decentralization of the decision making process right mm-hmm. i have decentralized decentralized it for decision making yes right and sort of decision making uh, right mm-hmm. so these are questions for me I'm, mm-hmm. i'm asking these questions because my decentralization 
which can make cost me a lot of money exactly yeah. i feel it is it was decentralization and it was associated with redundancies how it lead to redundancies change repeated i mean um, yeah so okay get what you mean so decentralization may lead to uh, induction of effort okay so see a lot of decentralization they've done so for me the question is if they have done it to um making so for me what sort of decision is it exactly. no yeah you know? they have been thinking of changing market dynamics so the manager immediately take a decision decision can be taken at, yeah uh, i mean to id if they are is there you know you can be taken at at the same level yes yeah. i think the good road map to start the analysis of the concept so for for me i'm looking at why did we decentralize what sort of decisions need to be uh, uh decentralized decentralized and uh, basically localized you know um the what has we need to kind of um of devo our thinking saying okay you can decentralize that particular um decision making but you don't have to decentralize the functions as well exactly you see and certain functions which are uh, very it's a root thing can centralize okay, like procurement procurement payments finance it right right again if you are let's say i'm i'm looking at it right each region is having separate it areas imagine right wow. if you're having like that i mean lack of resources Each, each area will have its manager, its supervisor. Correct. Correct. So this reason why you are having such a high admin cost. Uh-huh. Okay, leading to your increasing admin cost. But if you have in a central place, all management is done centrally. And actually, this day and age, a lot of the management of infrastructure, everything done by another third party, not even your centralized. company okay your company correct so you yeah exactly <laughs> your new new products that you're going to be selling <laughs> so what what we will do is you know this example company come up with a new erp system right and some can be accessed by all these uh the guys from across the world you can the, the guys in one country use it but all across the world they can use it <laughs> and management of the IP, that infrastructure etc can be done by a company you also don't need to have people in your company doing it right there are lots of um lots of Thing can do because our company is large, right? So since we have a very large company, there are lots of opportunities to um, improve. And, and since it has been there for forty years, I assume mostly they have not you know, modernized in a in a big way. And that is from traditional management. Yes. Okay. So the account in the system of lies authority with performance of the decentralized unit check in terms of accounting results. Right. What are the controllable accounts? Okay. Again, we like to you, right? Because you need to identify for each one of your 
um, stores, what are the direct costs that's going through, mm. right? So that be costs that are um, that are let's say done by the head office, okay. and you know the most annoying things for these these um, companies, these the source would be when they just blanket allocate um, those those costs based on some arbitrary way, right? So if I say I'm going to allocate my overhead based on each one's revenue, that can incentivize the the particular source to increase revenue, correct? Because when you increase revenue, you yeah, yeah. exactly. What is this? This is no incentive for me. You need to come up with the cost allocation methodology that that is fair, mm -hmm. right? Maybe. Is it fair and sorry, sorry. Yes. Did you say fair? Is there a methodology? No, fair. It's fair. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. And also, it could be based on say I could then based on activity based costing. What is generated? Say, for example, one of the things would be. Uh, I will. Uh, one of these would be uh, the questions that come from that particular particular store, right? Mm -hmm. Plus, I also look at the the um, the store. Right. The store, yes. right? Yeah. Exactly, right? But if I have a huge store, right? And I'm getting low transactions. Doesn't mean, you know, a good way of measuring just the transaction. I want one, two or three allocation methodologies that would use. Right? It has to be something that is um, legally acceptable by the um, the people who are running the store. Exactly. You know, acceptable. Then if they are going to be measured at the end of the day, because of profitability and all that, you add on these costs. Ideally, yes. Yeah. So ideally, yes. Ideally, what you should be showing is right. For you run it, if you have to have all these things in house, like your um, finance, IT, etc. If if you're going to be doing this, it's going to cost you X. But business is doing it. It's going to cost you X minus Y. Right, they need to see. Yes, by using head office, I'm able to uh, get yes. a good deal and saving. That, that that is the thought process that has to come through. But in you know, case it's the other way around. Exactly. Okay. It even in your own companies, if you let IT, when you use IT, they charge you right, and sometimes it's quite expensive. And Hiring somebody from outside yeah. and fellows to do it. Okay, so these are considerations that you need to uh, keep in mind. Now we talk about budget control, fixed budget, budget control, flexible budget, right? So flexible budget is what um, they they promote quite a bit, right? You have to be flexible according to the environment. Because fixed budget is fixed for that particular time. You know, when the changing environments come through, you're not uh, looking at it. It's not, um, you can't pick it up, right? And when it comes to budgeting, you should be able to have budgeting where, again, a system is used where it's not a painful process. You know, <laughs> the whole thing is across, um, you know, done pretty well. Aren't you ideally, how often do you review your budget? Do you organize that you have? Ask me, Devin? No, no, I'm you. In the often do you review your budget? I should review see you you uh, set up okay. the budget but but you, you should be reviewing every every month, right? Every because, month. Okay. Yeah. Because you're looking at your targets, where are we? Have I got to change something? Uh, you know, every month you're looking because so it's the other, an ongoing process. Correct. Correct. And actually you as um, management accountant will look at the budget ahead, not what has happened in the past. Right? You should be looking at oh, my budget for next month is going to be this, this, this. Now, how what are we going to be doing? 
will we do to achieve our budget right you will have to have the uh, main guys sales guys all these fellows you know you work with them to achieve the budget yeah because um it's not a case of you wait till the results come and then look at the budget and say oh there's a variance and then write a story about variance i think yes so has the market impact also because you know this the budget which is up to the cfo but uh, you know uh, just now you know you are way out out of the losses it might be maybe six not the cost that it might be the day around it can you know, one of which yeah this is where you as a management accountant has got the skin in the game yeah so this is where you work with the business right? the business to see mm-hmm. you know other things that you can do to in profitability target the targets all these things right mm-hmm. and one other student who was in a hotel industry right mm-hmm. say that he used to have constant fight is nearly coming to physical blows mm-hmm. with the chef. right just things in a diff- he's in a different planet altogether mm-hmm. mountains are in a different planet altogether they don't meet <laughs> because a chef yeah. yeah. goal is to make the most gorgeous food right you expensive product right mm-hmm. he doesn't care yeah. mm-hmm. comes to profitability these guys go crazy because the kitchen is a thing that makes money right So wasting you got them now we'll also have to work like that think of you know now in this case then the chefs who be actually planning your standard uh, it's not a la carte menu but you'll we'll have chefs who specialize in in the kind of product how to do it right but so you need to work with them right definitely this, this my student was saying they a good chat and you know it to hr and it was such a big thing but this was not nothing personal but it was in business now you coming back to gordon ramsay exam i think now uh, classically if you are chef it's uh, yes cooking is person but i think then it is another part of it oh it is kitchen management it makes a huge part yeah finance guy 80% is finance and 20% is marketing because it manages the cost He manages yes. the funding of the organization. Yes. He has to look at the marketing side of it. You know, Correct. Say my cost are X, Y, Z, and like yes. uh, uh, Yakub was saying, you know, we do a cost plus. But then if yes. you know, on the marketing side, it's not realistic. So what is the cost? The market is somewhere else. Correct. Right? Correct. So yes. Subject to so, like. I mean, if you're able to work with the chef. Now this is this is what this guy said. He said I worked with him, showed him the number, showed him what was going on, and said, you know, they need to see what you're talking about, and they need to understand the business, how to run the business, when making a dish. Right. So once he was able to convince this guy, show him, look, this is what's going on. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, you need change some things. and then he will to uh, work with the chef in a better way right. chef was conscious about what he was ordering actually he was not bothered one bit you know when he here we have to you know we have especially with our toppings and things like that we have yeah. to go into bush and see you know how what we are in this case right. like you look at your cost accountant so you you same page in finance so you do be from an 80% percent or like you said we have the nine that page on the, on the technical aspect and then look at the business aspect as well because yes. you can do a lot of things but if it's viable then then it must work and we can say okay the prices you know do this do that do this yes so i think what we have to look at is you know we spoke about flexible budgeting we have flexible budgeting we thought increasing in number of units right number of units how does it impact 
Right. I need and uh, in the case of I'm um, to increase the rough again, I will ask you the question if I is the number of um, restaurants, right? In five, ten would cost uh, certain components increase. All the cost increase. Okay. Right. right. Um, a plan number in right. I'll give you an example of Apple here, which is currently um, New York. You know, he had um, so he had given them a, a, congratulated them on sales of Apple and said. Said, well, you know, you need to um, need to increase the sales by ten million, right? Then, yeah, you can do it, uh, but um, you know, we need to probably increase our cost. He said, no. Cost is you increase the sale. So they were going on debating with him continuously. For many months, when they said no, we, this is the ratio. Okay, sales increase, the cost increase proportionately. This is how it works. He said no, think differently. And finally, he won the battle because they increase sales without increasing the cost. So mm -hmm. We do it. It's just a matter of thinking outside the box. I mean, these guys have decentralized. So, increasing the number of, of stores automatically will come up with increasing in cost, right? But for me, I would say no, of your direct cost should increase, particularly in the administration, right? So, the, um, the, the sorry, indirect cost should not, should not increase, right? Um, so, your uncle will be there. Right, of that, mm -hmm. but the others, like all your admin costs, you should be doing it centrally. Yes. Opening a store should be all that, that the, the components related to that store, like rent, electricity, water, mm -hmm. right, and the products that we send to that store. Things that should be increasing and nothing else. Right, and cost increasing because of a store addition. Store. Yeah, maybe maybe schools that will increase their administrative costs. Like every schools that will increase their admin costs are really. That would be the traditional way, yeah. but nobody has questioned. You see, where the management accountant will have to come in and question mm -hmm. and say. You know, why do you think, what are the cost drivers? Oh. What, why are you saying that just because I have 10 stores, I need to increase my admin cost mm -hmm. by 5%? One mm -hmm. opponent increases. Oh, you need to drill down and You drill down, push back on it and say, you know, give me explanations because oh. for me it does not make sense. Yeah. One that what we'll be doing tomorrow, right? Um, do look at um, marginal cost equal marginal revenue. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, this is quite self-explanatory, this budget, but do have a look at it and see how you can apply to um, KW. Okay. One second. Right, performance measurements. So let's go time. So you get six or seven performance measurement and transfer pricing. These two are pretty good ones, actually. Okay. Tomorrow. 
actual okay. performance measurements and sound processing. I don't think so, because actually Yakub wanted to um, change the timing, so I did. Is that for today? I mean... Yes. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Yes. Hi. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Oh. Oh.